Hi guys, welcome back to Coffee with Kira. And today I am so, so, so excited. In general, I've been excited because you guys have been tuning in. But today we are joined by a very, very special woman in my life. I met her a couple years ago and I call her my big sis because in my world, that is what she is to me. No offense, Tori, you're my big sister as well. But today we have a Reese on the podcast. Hello. She's yeah. she's fire, right? Look, look at this. Hi. <laughs> and to be fair, like I'm older than Tori, so I'm both of y'all's big sisters. So yeah, I mean, yeah, you're probably not going to say your age, but sh- let's just say black don't crack because you would never guess. I'm 37. Oh, it's so there depressing. you go. <laughs> yeah, no. No, when you don't look your age, it's yeah. okay to be like standing behind mm-hmm. it. So I'm like, yeah. No, that's my dad. He's always like, I like to say my age because I'm proud. I, I look this yeah. good. And yeah, mm-hmm. but. I need the kids to know you're not winning over this. Like, well, you're, you're killing <laughs> the just, game. No, you're not winning over this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. But, um, no, the no. comments are lit up right now. Like this ugly bitch. <laughs> I feel like we look like we're related. So we do. Yeah, yeah. We met on X on the Beach, which is, I think it was my fourth show. And that was a show on MTV. And I remember walking in and seeing Anarise and I was like, she looks like she could be my sister. And I remember you just being like, I was terrified of you at yes. first. When I first met you, I still am scared of you. Really? So you're intimidating. <laughs> you're just like so elegant and beautiful and like... I feel like in your own mode, like I feel like no one could say anything to make you feel like well, okay. you don't give insecure bitch at all. Thank you. you I'm know? not. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, but thank you. I think it comes with learning yourself and going through a lot of stuff. And it was also my fourth show. So that's funny. Okay, 20. And it's funny because she rolled up on the jet ski. That's when you first showed up. And because we look so similar, <laughs> I was like, oh, hell no. They're gonna, I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm going home this week. <laughs> They found another mixed girl. <laughs> I was like, no. So I was like, they're not going to have two of us on a show on TV. <laughs> but that's, that's the crazy thing. It's too thing. confusing to the viewers. So I was like, oh, I just got replaced. Look, she just no. rolled up. I was whispering to everybody. I was like, you see her? I'm out. I was like, I'm going home this week. But that's even crazy what you just said of like, there's only usually like <laughs> one black girl or this or that. Mm-hmm. For the first time, I think we both were saying like for this show, the cast was so diverse, which was great. So you diverse, know? Like, like diverse for us. Mm-hmm. For When it's diverse for brown people, yeah. that's when it's truly diverse. Yeah. Like diverse for white people is like just a couple people, maybe some redheads. <laughs> Sorry, it's true. It's true. No, but, but they like, had so many people like diversity and then also sexuality wise. I had been on yeah. so many straight 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 form shows where it's guy with girl and for the first time walking onto this show and meeting all of you guys because I came there about a week and a half after they had already started filming as like I guess like a bombshell I don't even know what X on the Beach calls it someone had come in and stirred up or whatever because oh. I wasn't coming in as someone I remember ex. yes I remember yes but yeah to walk in and also Arise is a trans black woman and Mike is is Mike is bi, right? Yeah, Mike's yeah, bi. Mike's yeah, Mike's bi. The guy that I met on there was bi. And like for the first time ever, I was like, wait, there are people like me here and I can yeah. talk and feel open and not like I have to like conform into what I felt like I had to be for all these other shows. Yeah. What other shows have you been on? And like, do you feel like it was as diverse as this show or? First, I want to say, because they're doing that whole like queer, what is that other show called? Like love attraction um, thing. What is it? It's on Netflix. Yeah. I oh, I think it's the gay ultimatum or something. Yeah, I think it's they ultimatum. Did, like, a queer, uh, the queer ultimatum. Uh, yeah, That's what it was. Yes. Yeah, so because they tried to cast me. Sorry, exposing your spot. Anyway, because I'm never going to go on the show because yeah. I am taken. Yeah, we'll but get we'll too. get into that. No, but um, we had the first queer ultimatum, just so everyone knows. Like they what got, they had to have gotten the idea from watching X on the Beach oh, because that think? was the queerest season well, of any us, dating show I've ever seen on TV. Before us, there was Are You the One? They did a fluid oh, season. Oh, was yeah. it really before us? It was. <laughs> I didn't watch it. I didn't it watch it. So I didn't know. Us, but it wasn't. I didn't. I didn't like it. Oh, okay. I didn't like it at all. Not well done. No, I don't was it think exploitative? So. Yeah, it was just, I think, over like sexualized, which I think is what That's people always annoying. put into being, especially for me as like bisexual. They're like, oh, so you're very sexual in general. No. And I'm like, my sexuality has nothing to do with like how much I d- sleep around or what I want to do. Like your it promiscuity. Has no- yeah. yeah, it has nothing to do with how often you're having sex. Yeah. It's all about attraction. Who am I attracted to? Exactly. Versus people cannot wrap their heads around gender or sexual attraction at all. And they're so simple to me. I don't know. I it's very it small simple. minded, which is mm-hmm. why once again with this podcast I love having these conversations but yeah I feel like with Are You The One they definitely just like over sexualized it like I remember there were scenes of like girls hooking up and stuff like that and they would just put like also like a little sliver it was very out there 
which no. I'm sure was entertaining to watch, but for me, I was like, yeah, no. So ours was a little bit more, I guess, tamed than that. Yes, but we were not all yeah. just having sex the whole time, mostly arguing. <laughs> yeah. You were mostly arguing. I was falling in love. I had an argumentative person, <laughs> so like, and you, you were did, falling you, in love. I was falling. I mean, yes. I think I got love bombed, but I yes, I was falling in love. Love bombing happened, and I and I might have had did a thing on the show, but they didn't air it, so we're all good. <laughs> and you guys are young; you're supposed to have fun. Yeah, but oh my god, before that episode, I was so stressed with my parents possibly like watching it. They're so open as well, but I was like, I don't want that, you know. Oh, they showed my boobs on TV episode one, and I got like texts, like D- your just nips? like yeah, like running, and because they didn't blur it out. Um, I didn't even see that. Yeah, because people were watching it online. They're like, girl, they didn't blur it out and your boobs are on TV. I was fully crying at our opening party because I was like, my mom is watching this show. I thought that you would be like, free the nipple. No, because my whole family is watching this show. I don't want my aunt to see my boobs. Like, they're all proud of me and shit for being on TV again. (laughs) And then they're like, oh, there's a Reese's nipple. Yeah, and I'm just like, I didn't sell myself short. I promise. I'm I'm sorry. Wait, so what other shows have you been on? Oh, so I did. My first show was six or seven years ago. It was called Strut and it was on Oxygen. It was produced by Whoopi Goldberg and we won the GLAAD award that year uh, for best show, for best reality show over Caitlyn Jenner's show and Jazz Jennings' show. Sorry, Jazz. Nice girl. Sorry, Caitlyn. I'm not sorry, Caitlyn. (laughs) She's a... Brick. Have anyway, so I said it. Oh my god, that was harsh. Oh have you met, have you met Caitlyn? Yes, Jenner? I was at her birthday party a couple Wait, years ago. I'm like wh- before she was really problematic. It was like her first year out, and then she had a birthday party at was it the Ace Hotel? No, it was the Standard Hotel. It was a hotel downtown with a rooftop. Okay, I think, I no I think it was the Standard. There's it was the Standard. <laughs> yeah, I think it was the Standard. So. Okay. Uh, it was a beautiful party, yeah. and uh, she even addressed me and her daughter's feud that we cur- we had currently had, because uh, me and Kendall had a feud where she had me blocked on Instagram. <laughs> Wait, I'm learning so much. What? Okay, what feud did you have with Kendall? Oh, and I wrote we'll an open. Okay, yeah, I wrote an open letter to her literally 14 years ago. No, oh 10 years ago. It was 10 years ago. It was 2014. Okay. That's why I messed it up. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, I wrote an open letter to her for a, a newspaper, like a publication that I worked for. Yeah. Like I was a writer there, and so I wrote this uh, Facebook status because that's when people use. Facebook guys, sorry, I'm really old. Okay, we talked about this. So my Facebook status hey, people was make just, money on Facebook. So yo, I used to. Yeah. No, but um, I was like, I used to. I don't use it anymore though. Not really. But uh, I wrote as my status, like, because Kendall said that people were bullying her at Fashion Week because they mm-hmm. said she didn't earn her spot, and I knew the girl she was talking about, mm. and like I knew them personally because okay. I was modeling in New York. Like yeah. I'm like I was at Ford Models in New York. You're yeah. talking about my friends, mm-hmm. and so they're not gonna say anything. So I messaged them. I said, bitch, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say something. Like say something. And so I said something in my status like I was like dear Kendall Jenner this is why you're being bullied and so I heard from my editor and she said I were will you pay- like she said I will pay you to expand on this and write an entire article and I said okay I said an open letter to Kendall Jenner like this is why you're trash like basically and I it was completely libelous it's completely it's true and then oh I had an interview my first interview on Access Hollywood was because of that and uh, I was supposed to have an interview with her on TMZ with Kit, Chris in, with, in her mm-hmm. defending like their right to being like Nepo like babies like sitting there with them talking yeah about it. and um, literally an hour before Chris called it off I said she knew I was gonna drag them oh the you would have yeah I was gonna get up. and I've watched Arise I was just get by em. being on the show with her and then in real life as well like when people try to come for her even when you're being playful and like mm-hmm. sassy I could never like I'm not quick with comebacks you were the type that like the second that someone says something to you you're so fast with like coming back for them and like hitting them with some heat and I'm like I could never win in an (laughs) argument with you like no one probably so maybe Chris as like the businesswoman that she is she's like I just feel like if we go and do this it's not gonna be good for us yeah no because now Kendall's still modeling she's doing a great job the nepotism worked out for her Mm -hmm. and um, Kylie's a better model than her let's all talk about that but anyway (laughs) I was like it's okay we don't have to go there but everyone knows it's not like I said anything untrue right now I said I didn't say it you did yeah no Kylie's like no because every time they let Kylie in front of the camera I'm like I would be so embarrassed if I was Kendall because she's eating her up Kylie is hot I think she's hot like whenever I see her stuff I'm like she's a really good model Yeah. yeah and Kendall just she gives you nothing every time and so she's gonna block me again if she ever sees this <laughs> but so i'm unblocked you, you're, now you're i'm un- unblocked yeah so that also i'm like i wonder she just one day went on your page and she's like yeah this girl that said all this stuff about me now i'm gonna unblock her i don't know but i was on her radar and then i'm sure she knows exactly who i am because then she also responded with that mean girls burn book video mm-hmm. And people were messaging me, oh my God, she's calling you Regina George. I'm like, does she know that means I'm the winner? <laughs> like, that means I was, yeah, I'm actually Queen B. So try you me are again. Queen B. Anyway, so that happened. Yeah. So that was my first show. Okay. So I think I basically was probably cast because of that. Wow. But uh, my agent, my then agent, was the one who started the show. Yeah. 
Uh, he's still my agent. I don't know why I said my then agent. But anyway, that was my first show. Mm -hmm. It was a good experience. And it was it was not like sleepaway camp. Yeah. We filmed during the day or during That's the, the night. Best and then we went home. We got our phones back. We could post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm shooting a show. I'm so excited for you all to see no, this. That's the best. I'm never going to do another show that's like sleepaway, sleepaway camp. camp. Love Island <sighs> Games was my last. I can't give up my life like that again. It no. just mentally throws you so off. And it's so unnecessary. Because yeah. then you see the end result. And I'm like, I didn't have to not know any news or mm. talk to like my boyfriend yeah. or my mom like yeah. I could have had a life yeah. you guys well, didn't I think they the... want you isolated so that you go a little like going back to our show you you, you were telling me a little bit earlier like you had I kind of a, a, not a mental breakdown that's a, a lot to say but you broke down because it was a mental breakdown it was, okay <laughs> Like, I was, I was gonna, literally going to walk down the hill from yeah. the house, like, and just, like, hitchhike. I yeah. was like, I'm out of here. Our, on our yeah. show, she almost left. I didn't even know that, but we were just talking a little bit before we started. And she, like, went out and was, like, begging to talk to her mom. And they are like, no, no, no. Oh, I didn't beg. I demanded. <laughs> I, I said, I'm speaking to Conchita yeah. now. Her well, I am leaving. Yeah, Conchita. Oh, yeah. Conchita. <laughs> I know, Conchita. No, so I'm, I said, I'm speaking to Conchita now, or I am leaving. Yeah. I'm leaving the set if but I don't talk to But they try to her. isolate you and not yeah. give you that so that you go a little crazy or so that you rely on other people in the house mm -hmm. and then and that they can get those conversations on camera instead, you know? Yeah, That's but I was, we already had such good relationships with everyone in True. the house. Like yeah. I, like me and Davon spoke privately constantly, which yeah. they never showed, by the way. They didn't show a lot of storylines They didn't show us being show. friends. They didn't show any of us really getting to know each other, which I think is such a, um, a misstep for them because oh you can't yes. really fall in love with characters or get mm -hmm. to know the story you're just watching relationship after after relationship and not seeing how it developed yeah, yeah. into this because it's showing like all of us as friends and it's like how they all become friends you didn't show anything yeah no X on the Beach our show is definitely one that I was so excited for it to come out because when I got on there I felt for the first time like I was with a bunch of people that I could relate to mm -hmm. and just all the different storylines and what they were showing and I think that they showed it badly Badly. And like you said, you have to fall in love with characters. And I remember there was barely any times where, where there were conversations or just so many moments, even in my relationship as well. And I'm sure the same for you where I was yeah. like, why didn't you show that? That would have been such a moment. They just showed like the weird, dumb moments. Yeah. They didn't show any of me and Mike's like little inside joke moments like, yeah. where we're like making fun of each other, but being like a married couple sort yeah. of. And I'm like, well, maybe you'd see like, because they're like, it's like, why wouldn't why wouldn't you show that? Why wouldn't yeah. you show the, the relationship yeah. and then show how we all developed friendships? Mm -hmm. It's like, because it was so much nothing happening. There was nothing happening. I mean, it definitely, I would say like the casting side of it, like once again, it was great. I love mm -hmm. the cast. Our, you know, without naming names and stuff, like you were with a guy, I came in, her guy liked my guy. Mm -hmm. When I got there, I went for my guy, took him from your guy, but like not really. They were kind of just kind of talking. Yeah, it had not even that the flame didn't even spark like it, yeah it was like but sort of happening and we looking at it from like a watching perspective mm -hmm. it's like why didn't they let that ride out one more week further like a couple just, more days just something but I think in general for people to see that on TV and if you were actually able to see more of it once again so many people would have felt seen seeing yeah. like a guy go for a guy and then a girl and then for you guys to be together it was just so many things that I think you don't see on TV it's usually yeah. just guy and girl and I was like it had so much potential to just be a moment yeah for like everyone a to queer see. hodgepodge yeah, yeah, there were straight people too because then I had like a once I was with my guy, I had my ex girl come in and it was just like my dream of a show to be on and be yeah. a part of. So coming off, I was like, this is going to be massive. Like, yeah. this is literally what I would dream of watching growing up. And then the way they edited it and did everything, it was just like, mwah, mwah. yeah, they not, not missed good. so many things. They deleted so many scenes. Like, remember um, your the girl who came in because we're not naming names. Well, today. no, we can name. I just oh, want to name we... your name. Oh, but... okay. oh, okay. Then yeah. we say Emily. Yeah. Emily's speech at the table at the end in the jungle oh that did God. not show they never yes. showed it they never showed us going to the jungle none of it it was amazing it was like like they could have gotten an emmy it yeah. was such a good speech of just like forgiveness and self-growth mm -hmm. and it was like wow yeah I wish I was that big a person mm -hmm. like after like a situation happened. And I think a lot of people could have learned from that. And I'm yeah. like, this was cut. Yeah. Emily was the girl that I was with. You guys just saw her on one of the most recent episodes. She's so gorgeous. And it was just She's her birthday. She's so gorgeous. Yeah. It was just her birthday. Yeah. And yeah, she came out here to shoot the podcast as well, which I was so happy that she ah, did that. We love Emily. Yeah. But yes. me and her, as you guys know, we talked about it on the last podcast. Like we went through it on there and there was a scene at the end where she got up and she like said this whole speech to everyone, including me, of course, because we had gone through it so much and it was so beautiful and once again just to say i love you emily like she came 
this past podcast and was just so like her energy and everything like the growth and everything i was yeah. just like yeah because she's, she's killing it she's killing yeah, she's it she's all over the world sexy yeah. yeah yeah so since um i was about to say love island <laughs> so since x on the beach like dating life so did you go on the show fully single <laughs> You know oh what? <laughs> you you messy. No, okay, fine. Let's f-ing talk about it. Okay, we're Do talking you know about how it. many people, so, honestly, with these shows go on with someone, especially you know. I was already talking to yeah. my fiance ah! by the time I was going on this show. Look at the ring. Look I at know, the ring. Yay! Nine carats of <laughs> oh, pure shoes. Australian opal. He is an Australian. Yeah, he's an Australian. Man. He's, he's from. He's, a man. he's from Tasmania. Yeah, oh, he's wow. from Hobart, I, Tasmania. I, I, why does, I don't even know that place. It sounds like it's from a book or something. It, it's his, that's what I used to call him in, like the first year. And he then, is tall. He is handsome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah tall, white, and handsome. <laughs> Why'd you put the white in? Because we usually say tall, dark, and handsome. Oh. And so I was like, ha There you go. There you go. So you were talking to him a little yeah. bit before. Yes, I was talking to him a lot before. Mm-hmm. But um, I told him I'm going on the show yeah. um, with my ex. And he was like, oh, okay, have fun. He was good. not insecure at all. Good. He said, have a good time. I'll yeah. see you when you get back. And mm-hmm. I knew that we were super serious mm-hmm. when I came back. Because this is, this is a testament to him um, and his love for me. And I love him so much. Um, when I got back, you know how we didn't have our phones for five weeks? Yeah. I'm sitting in the Madrid airport. I finally have reception because it was crazy. Yeah, it really um, was. Just getting your phone back, trying to get reception, going from the Canary Islands to whatever airport you have to get to, which yeah. is Madrid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we so I finally, yeah, I finally got my reception. And I see all the messages I've missed. And it's just like all these Instagram messages. And he's first. He had messaged me every single day for five weeks. Wow. Every single day for five weeks. Oh. I was sitting in the Madrid airport and I was sitting there almost in tears listening to every message. Like he'd sent me the news that happened that day that Britney got free, <laughs> that um, we pulled out of Iraq, <laughs> like the free. war was over. Yeah, like the mm-hmm. war was over in Iraq. Like all this shit happened while we were over there. And I was like, he was filling you in. He yeah, wanted and he you was, to be in the loop when you got yeah, out. Yeah, and he sent me all these memes I would have posted because I'm a meme queen on my stories. Oh my, my gosh, stories. her story is, I, I'm sorry, Reese, sometimes I Say can't. It. It's like I know, 50 don't. stories in 24 hours, maybe more. And it's not even you on your story. I'm like, I want to see what you're doing with your life. Sometimes. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah, maybe like <laughs> two out of the 50. And I'm like, where are you? Hey, get me booked more. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I will gladly be on there more doing stuff. But he otherwise, to I'm not going to show you around my house sitting. <laughs> No. See, I'm like crazy looking. I'm like, hey guys. Yeah, I'm like, like, I'm not doing that. No, I need glam, full Uh, glam. Otherwise, I'm not doing that. No, I went to the club once with the Reese, and she just proceeded to stand next to the photographer and take photos the whole night. I was like, so. That's why I was there. (laughs) (laughs) That is why I was there. I don't dance. I pull up my pants and do the rock away. No, I'm just kidding. That's right. I just age myself even further. Yeah, I'm like, do I know what that reference was? No, no, no one that watches I'm this does. Yeah, no, no one that watches this does. No, but, um, but yeah, so I knew that we were, I'm like, oh shit, he really likes me. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to take him seriously yeah. for real, for real. Yeah, like, that must have is, felt so good because like. It did. It took me three and a half hours to get through five weeks. Like I couldn't listen to anyone else's stuff. So like I called my mom, I called him. Like when we got our phones back in the hotel room, I called him. Yeah. But when I saw the messages, I'm like, I will look at these when I'm in the airport. Yeah. And so when and I finally got you're also like recharging. Like you need to talk to your mom after yeah, I had to that call kind mom. of experience. Yeah, I was yeah. like, hey, I'm not crying anymore. Yeah, yeah. So how did you <laughs> yeah. respond to it when you responded to him? I said, wow, every day? He's like, well, not every day. I was like, it was like every day. I'm like, I said, you like me. Oh, and how did you meet? <laughs> oh my God, we met, um, I'm going to expose us right now. We met on Grinder in 2020. Okay, Grindr. <laughs> yeah, so I love during it. the pandemic, I swear, yeah. no, the dating apps, they work. They work. I they got my work. dog. I got my dog on Puppy Find. I got my car on Auto Trader, and I got my husband on Grinder. Yeah, I hate when people <laughs> are like, "Oh, that's lame." Like you're on dating apps. I'm like, yeah, because I want to meet someone. Yeah, welcome to now. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you meeting them? The grocery store, girl. No one makes a move in the grocery store. It doesn't happen. The, and, the movie stuff is not like that. Doesn't happen. And you're narrowing your choices a lot. They have to be mm-hmm. geographically down the street from you. Well, I don't also think because, so. Because what he's moving here. Most of the yeah. time, you're never gonna know if someone's gonna actually choose to move to another country for you. Mm-hmm. You're lucky. Sometimes they're like no, and it's long distance, and then it fizzles out. Yes, yeah, some people know? won't even like visit you. Like let's say you live in New York, they won't even go to Brooklyn. Yeah. Like those relationships are over. Like people oh. are not traveling from Manhattan to Brooklyn. Me like, being just in the not. valley already is mm-hmm. like hard for me to continue with people sometimes. And I actually, my last hookup was in Australia. My first one night stand Ooh. was an Australian man. Ooh. Yeah! From, Ozzy, I'm Ozzy, not Ozzy. expose it. 
oh my god people might even think oi, of oi, from oi. this past show but no like it was just a situation that happened but he was trying to talk to me every day and like be all cute and I was just like dude Aussies you are great. Live, yeah but you live in Australia and and that means I, nothing but that's so scary <laughs> I was like I, I had start. never been there but you have, have you ever gone. been there yeah I went to Sydney for two months for modeling so that's not scary yeah. now you but can I do it again were well, you at Priscilla's no, Priscilla's the modeling agency no, that's IMG. the biggest one. IMG oh, okay work 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 yeah. okay Didn't it's know. where I had my biggest IMG issues. world yeah yeah but it was a very it was a sad time I would love to go back there and have like a different situation perspective happen. Yeah, yeah I had like a bad eating disorder at the time and it was like one of the worst times yeah. of my life but I've been there yeah <laughs> we all modeling have. yeah modeling yeah. yeah we're both from a modeling background as mm-hmm. well and that's that's a whole different story but yeah so he's moving here He's moving here. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I mean, like your past life of dating, has it been hard or because you've been engaged before? Oh, God. Yes, I have. Yeah. We don't, Damn. Anything that you don't Okay, want. Oprah. <laughs> I have been engaged me. before. I yes, don't, yes. Dude, anything, though, that you I don't want to say, I will literally okay. just say no. Yes, I've been engaged. Yes, yes. I've been engaged yeah. before, but that was so short lived. We were yeah. engaged for, I think, two months before I called it off mm-hmm. because yeah. we were living together at the time mm-hmm. and it just. Everything that you see, okay, here's a lesson that I learned from my mom that is just true. Sometimes people are just aren't compatible and you're gonna see those warning signs in the beginning weeks of you dating. Mm-hmm. You're gonna see little red flags here and there. They will come back. I mean it, they will come back in moments of stress, moments of grief, moments of like where you're being tried financially, just mm-hmm. you will experience that full force. And those are gonna test your relationship to see if you're supposed to be with that person. And nine times out of 10, those are where your non-negotiables are. And so I knew from the start, it probably wasn't gonna work out. And yeah. I think he knew it too. It's just you give it a shot. And uh, those red flags came up from both of us. From both of us, we were not compatible. Yeah. And because it's not one sided, mm-hmm. it's all two sided. Oh, no, of course. And so, yeah, in retrospect, I'm like, wow, I knew better and I just went with it anyway because well, I was even young. knowing better. I feel yeah. like, exactly, you're younger, you just have to go through more situations to know, okay, maybe I want to ignore these red flags and all this different stuff. But if I continue going down this road, you know how much it hurts when it doesn't work out because yes. then you've invested so much time. Yes. And there's so much love and there's so many memories and all this different shit that you're like, damn, I wish I followed my gut and all those signs that I decided mm-hmm. to ignore in the beginning. Yeah. So when you go through that pain, I think once that happens again, when when you get older and when you start dating more, you're like, wait, okay, I don't want this to happen again. So even though I might be lonely right now, maybe I have to be lonely for a little bit longer yes. just so that I don't feel that pain again. Yeah. And I meet the right person. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Like what you need to do before you ever get into a relationship, especially after coming out of a bad, like bad breakup, fall in love with yourself again, by yourself, yeah. not the, the not the person you remember who you were in the relationship, figure out who you are after the relationship, grow a little bit, you know, try new things, hang out with new people, really test yourself to see who you are in the world. And then you start to really like feel yourself again. Yeah. You're like, God, you know what? I'm great. Mm-hmm. I'm great. I really like me. I like mm-hmm. me by myself. I like me. And then we'll swoop in the love of your life. <laughs> Literally, though, I truly believe that. Yeah, because when you are not looking, there they are. And I know everyone says that it sounds super cliche. I was not looking. I was looking for attention. (laughs) I was like, I want someone to like slide my DMs. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and buy some merch, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Dragqueenmerch.com. Yeah, dragqueenmerch.com. We're going to get all the merch. Arise Wanzer. Yes, dragqueenmerch.com. No, I'm not a drag queen, but fuck it. (laughs) That's where they hold the merch. Have you ever dressed up in drag? Yeah, I did drag uh, before I jumped the fence. I don't know what that means. Oh. I'm trans. And is so that, is that a saying for it? Uh, it was in Miami, but oh, like, I don't okay. think anyone uses it, but <laughs> no one here uses it. But I think it's, I just thought it was such a funny little like saying, but um, so it was sort of my way of like coming out mm-hmm. a second time. Cause I came out as gay, just yeah. like high femme when so I was when 16. Did you, when you were 16. Yeah. And so that's why like I was, but then, you know, I grew my hair out to here. I was mm-hmm. mascara. I looked like black Paris Hilton through <laughs> high school. And uh, like so tan, so tan, tanner than I've ever been in my whole life. And I'm a black person, but I was bronze. Yes, I was going to the tanning salon every single day. Yeah, I was getting, I was getting the spray on afterwards. No, because I was a cheerleader too. So we were bleaching our teeth. I had the blonde streaks. My hair was here. Mascara for days, like spider lash. Like I was like out, and then you were a cheerleader. uh, I was a cheerleader already. You were cheerleader already. Yeah, I was already a cheerleader. Okay. Yeah. So. So were you in like an accepting community? Yeah. Like like, yeah, Mike. Because we went to um, by no choice. Uh, 
when I got into my high school, they started sectioning off the high schools to be certain things. Like this one was more like MIT-ish, like, mm. you know, like focused in tech and mm-hmm. math and science or whatever. Yeah. And then this high school was good, like the big sports high school, mm-hmm. like where like all the big sports people would go, where they're going to start like getting football players and whatnot from and mm-hmm. uh, all the good team people. And ours just happened to be the school of the arts. So people got moved in to do acting mm-hmm. and fashion and shit like and this that. this was Miami, so it's still No, like... no, no. This is Virginia. I'm Virginia? From, I am from Woodbridge, Virginia, yeah. <laughs> so I would think, though, that people, even if it was like an artsy fartsy school, that people would still oh, be kind of close minded. Oh, I was so bullied. Yeah, I was okay. so bullied. But yeah, I was... I'm like, this sounds very smooth sailing, and it yeah. kind of made sense with Miami because I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, it's still a city and happening. But yeah, Virginia? this is Woodbridge, Virginia. Yeah, no, but it was yeah. 2000 old. Uh, this is 2001 you're not when I went old. to high school. You know how many people are going to get mad at you for saying that you're old? Oh well, I'm just saying my 20th high school reunion comes up in two years. So there's nothing wrong with that. Just saying. I'm Once just again, saying, black girl. Crack. You look Girl, great. you were you were three when I graduated <laughs> when I graduated from high school. I was not three. You were five. I'm ten years younger than you, so maybe. <laughs> I know. I was gonna say, girl, that sounds about right for the timeline. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, so that being said, you came out. You were already a cheerleader. People, yes. you got bullied. Oh yeah, I was fully bullied, but um, I was really confident because after after you come out, you can't really be shaken. And I already knew I was trans, by the way. Oh. I just knew you couldn't say that in Woodbridge, Virginia. I was like, okay, so we're pushing it. the envelope, yeah. so we're just gonna slowly move into girl clothes land and mm-hmm. grow your hair out and start just living as her. Mm-hmm. And um, did you change your pronoun at that point as well in high school? No, or? no, that's too dangerous. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is Woodbridge, Virginia, yeah. 2001, 2002. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's not happening. It just it wasn't a safe space because what I always tell kids now, like, what advice would you give to queer kids? I'm like, like about coming out. I'm like, come out when it's safe to come out. Everyone's like, oh, just come out. They'll get over it. No, no, no. Some parents will throw you on the street when you could have just made it to 18 and mm-hmm. did what you needed to do. Because mm-hmm. then, because guess what? If they get thrown on the street at a certain age, you can't get a work permit. You can't get housing. You can't like that's going to be so hard yeah. for just and not that some people can't endure that, but some people can't. Mm-hmm. And for those that can't, and I wouldn't, I don't think I could. Um, I'm going to talk for the kids like me, like just ride it out and get your parents money. Take the money and run, honey. Do you think so your parents wouldn't have kicked you out? No, no. My parents are super like liberal. OK, progressive so just in people. your community, you're like, OK, I'm not going to do this. Yeah, yet. it's still like very all white Republican yeah. place. Yeah. But my school was artsy fartsy and mm-hmm. so like it's a bunch of drama students and I'm yeah. like oh they are much queerer than me <laughs> like I like there were just people floating down the hallway like covered in glitter blowing bubbles I'm like oh okay I'm gonna be fine here <laughs> Yeah, so I was fine, but there's still bullies because yeah. not everyone gets moved to the school of, like, mm-hmm. the jocks and the MIT people. Yeah. But, like, uh, I was just so confident by then because no one can shake you once you come out. They're just like, F- you're like, I kind of said that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like, like, I don't know what you want. Like, yeah, I'm not, what am I, we want, we want me to change clothes. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna. Yeah. So just whatever. Well, that's good because it also though sounds like you had the support of your parents. And that's why a support I'm sure system. they taught you yeah. that, you know, be you. And like, yeah. you're going to have that support. I think it is harder, like you were saying. And it's similar to what my dad said when he came on. Mm-hmm. When I asked him, like, what advice would you give to young men who want, want to come out and maybe feel like they don't know how? Mm-hmm. And he said the same thing. He was like, just make sure that you do have a safe place or, you know, exactly. Exactly what Safety. you said, you pretty much said. And it breaks my heart that that would even have to be a thing that someone might have to wait or, mm-hmm. you know, hold back and not be able to be who they fully want to be at that moment. But it's so true. It's just a reality. Yeah. And it. it's it feels like and I'll say this to a queer youth. It feels like it's going to be forever. And one day it's just it becomes your forever. Like, I can't remember a time I wasn't me. Yeah. Um, and I'm really happy with my life. Like, people think that trans people are so troubled. I do not give a fuck about being trans. I care about how people treat me because. Mm-hmm. I'm trans. I'm like, well, that sucks. That was rude or that was off putting. But um, I still like myself. Like, and you, the way you treat me shows how much you don't like yourself. Oh, it's all a reflection. Yeah, it's such, it's so much of that. I'm just like, you're projecting so hard because I love my life. No, you're good. No, it is reflecting though, because they're not reflecting on who they are and you scare them. Mm. Your queerness scares them. They, mm-hmm. They're afraid of how free you are. They're afraid of uh, what you might change within them. And they're and, mad because they can't do it themselves. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like the whole world, like for cis hetero people, the whole world was made for you to succeed. Mm. If we're farther than you, you have to ask yourself why. I love that. That's not my problem. Yeah. Like we did this in spite of things being against us. Yeah. And I don't know what your problem is, but maybe check within. Seek help. Yeah. Seek some therapy. How are you going to win if you ain't right within? Lauren Hill. Oh, anyway. There you go. That's so, it. Yeah. you know, when did you then switch your pronouns and, mm. you know, 
fully. Honey, I tell people I hit the tarmac and I was like, by the way, I'm a woman. I've been, uh, I couldn't say that there. Was your family <laughs> already saying her? Uh, or when yeah, you got no, they there, got, they, like, when I, it's funny, when I came out to my sisters, I came out to my mom first mm-hmm. uh, during Christmas break. We love it. I, yes, I came, I, I, she picked me up from the airport and I was like shaking. And I was like, mom, I have to tell you something. I said, I am trans and I've been living as a woman in Miami ever since I landed there. And she was like, okay, well, are you going to finish school? Because she's a Capricorn. <laughs> that's all she cared about. She said, are you going to finish school? I said, yes. She goes, okay. All right. Are you happy? I said, no, I'm a student. <laughs> like, that was my first. I was like, no, Erase no. It's the drama. Yeah, I know. No, I like, I'm not happy. No, I'm not happy. Your I'm mom is student. reacting amazingly, honestly. Yeah, no, she was fine. She's just being like, that doesn't change anything. Yeah, you are she you. Was, yeah, she was just like, well, what's transgender? And I told her, and she's like, well, that sounds about right. Okay, well, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. We're going to figure it out as we go. I don't yeah. know. And uh, then I told my sisters that I had to call them because I, I don't think uh, one of them couldn't make it home for Christmas. So I mm-hmm. called them on two way or three-way, and uh, they were laughing so hard. They were like, oh my God, we were wondering when you were gonna figure that out. We've been (laughs) laughing about you for years. Like, that's a woman. And I'm just like, ugh. And so you think it's gonna be this like profound moment, and they took all the wind out of my sails. They're like, ah, she just figured it out. And I'm like. And you're over here just shaking, but at the same time, I feel like that is the best way. They're like, good response. we already knew, we still love you. It changes nothing. Yeah. It literally changes nothing. It changes nothing. I'm not a different person. I don't look that different. At least like, to your family members, it changes yeah. nothing. Yeah. Because, of course, in society and even, I want to yes. ask, like, in this industry, yes. you know, as a trans black woman, yes. how do you... Mm-hmm. We both modeled, you know, how mm-hmm. is that getting into the game? And, oh, my God. You know, the tokenism was real because there's tokenism being a black model. Yeah. Um, you know that. I and do. like where you're you look around, there's 45 white girls on this yeah. runway and there are two black girls and one Asian. The competition is hard because, you yeah. know, as a black woman, they're only going to hire so many like as a white just girl. Two usually. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah, for me, just two. for me on set, it would be say it's a five model set. It would be me. One. I was the black girl. Mm-hmm. And I even had like um, a weird thing with that because I was biracial. So mm. as well, I'm like, I'm not even fully black and I'm just representing the black community fully. Like it was always kind of like this, what's it called when you're being something, when you feel like you're being something that imposter you're Imposter syndrome? Yeah, I was having like no, imposter syndrome. I get that yeah. because um, I feel the same thing because I'm 100% black by like three generations yeah. because of slavery. Hello. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, not a pretty picture, America, but you did it. Anyway, <laughs> I was like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> eh, can't change I'm the past. It, yeah. yeah, it's like, can't change the past. Anyway, but um, but you can change the future, so vote correctly. Nice. But... Um, <laughs> But that being said, when I'm on a set and I'm the only black girl, yeah. and then it's like it's like four white girls, I'm the only black girl, and I'm like, this is the representation. We can all share makeup. I'm like this, <laughs> yeah. No, it's like this isn't yeah. the black representation yeah. you think it is. I'm like, this is kind of mm-hmm. You should have had a darker skinned person. It's I'm very aware of how the that and is. And it's getting and better now. We, I will say that. We'll say it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, was like, I think it's all more tokenism because even everyone's like, oh, they're including plus size models. I'm like, are they? Mm-hmm. Are they? I think they're in some places. They're yeah. not across the board yeah well someone just said how that at first it was plus size then it was mid-size like they keep on changing the name of like plus size women but they're also making them smaller and smaller every single time oh, they... shit. can i get moved to mid-size please That's... if my <laughs> agent is watching this oh my god i want to eat bread <laughs> but no being in okay. the industry have you ever had like a negative moment happen to you that oh you're, like... my god yes so i was at a modeling agency um Oh, they're not open anymore. I was at Irene Marie in okay. Miami. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was one of my first agencies. I think it was my third or fourth agency. Because mm-hmm. I changed agencies every year in Miami. Because yeah. our contract would be up and I'd be like, I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, anyway, to the next one. Yeah, That's right. Um, and the other one will book you more. So keep moving, ladies. Anyway, <laughs> and gents, because gents model as well. Mm-hmm. And thems work. Um, All of the above. Everyone. Yes. So... Um, I remember uh, I was under like a gag where they're like, do not say you're trans to anyone. Oh, wow. And so they're like, when you get to set, don't talk because your purse is going to fall out. And just because I'm too, they're like, you're too confident. You're too, like, no one acts like that. Yeah. They're like, girl, like girls don't act like that. That's what they told me. Are you, you don't sp- freaking yeah. kidding me? When really, it's funny because you see anyone on set, black girls talk a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, I Although was acting like any other black girl. <laughs> like, and even a way, just in a, being black in general, I do remember my agency as well always being gagging like, you. you. Well, yeah. They're like, you have to be classier, even mm-hmm. as far as showing up. Like, white girls could show up with like sneakers and their hair kind of bent. No, we have to look perfect. I had polished, you know? And I was always like, what is this double standard? Why do I have to be so much more on, no. so much more everything perfect about me just to be on the same level as the Caucasian girls coming in. Mm-hmm. It didn't no. make sense. And I need people to really, like, that is the definition of white supremacy because they can be mediocre, and this is, it's a harsh thing to hear, but it's true. White people can be mediocre at the thing you have to be the best in, and we have to be above and beyond because every single 
I'm gonna say this, every for three years, every single black girl at Ford Models was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen in mm-hmm. my life. Mm-hmm. Like in my life, like you see them on the street, you're like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you, like you take a breath like, and you're just like, God damn, mm-hmm. like I, I would maybe trade places with her. <laughs> and I think I look pretty good. No, but, um, but- That means a lot coming no, from you. Yeah, no, but, <laughs> and then they'd be these gorgeous white girls, but then there's a whole roster of just very regular looking girls. We did not have any brown, regular looking pre- people. Mm. They had to be, they had to all be like Victoria's Secret, mm-hmm. commercial status, mm-hmm. um, which people don't understand. Commercial means like commercially viable, like smile, beautiful, yeah. stunning. Like you see them in all the ads, but also they walk high fashion when they're supposed to. Yeah. Whereas uh, the white girls got to be just regular looking, and they weren't like ugly. It's just they were real regular. Like if you walked around them, uh, walked on the street and saw them, you don't think anything. Whereas every brown girl there was the most beautiful girl you'd ever seen, myself yeah. included. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was just very much so that it was. A and you know what bar. I mean. I one hundred percent do. Mean. And I just think that no matter what, especially around that time, and you were even a time before me, it was like, yeah, as a black girl, you just had to be so much more on and everything be perfect about you than a lot of the other girls the white girls that were there Mm -hmm. and it was always very hard for me and it always made me feel less than and still to this day definitely affects me that when I see to just be to be real like a blonde blue-eyed girl I sometimes feel less than just because of what was kind of put into me from I got signed at 13 so very soon I was just having these things even it's funny you got signed back the same time I was actually modeling in New York yeah. And so like Maybe we were going paths. no, but we were going through the same black girl problems, yeah. which is very funny because yeah. as a thirteen year old you shouldn't have had to go through those. No, like, they should have been and, fixed already. Yeah. And it was just it was hard, even on the sense of I always had to be the one in the pants or the shorts. Like I could never be the feminine girl on set. Mm-mm. I was always more they of like the tomboy. black women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was always very confusing and hard just I guess, yeah, being a black girl in the industry. So so I guess that's crazy. Your agency was just like, don't say anything. Yeah. Don't speak about it. It's, and you were just like, okay. Honey, I wanted to work. Yeah. And there was nothing that was any different. I was um, the only trans person on the board yeah. at every agency I was at. And so I was just happy to be there. Did you kind of go around at first and try out different agencies? Like, did any uh, say no, no? No, Whoever said yes the first time, like that, I remember the first time I got signed, I think it was to Green Agency, and then I signed to Runways, and then I signed mm-hmm. to Irene Marie, and then I signed to, I won't say their name because I want to sign with them again. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, elite. Anyway, no, I'm just gonna, <laughs> no, no, sorry. No, no, but like, you know, you, I moved around every year. Yeah. But, um, the first one that said yes, I was like, okay, thank God. Go with it. Yeah. And so I was on the new faces boys board. I know. Oh, oh my God. And then I remember when I was but you transitioning. Had, like, the hair already. Yes, yes. Yeah. But, um, I, but you know, you can't have makeup, like mm-hmm. nothing like that because mm-hmm. you have to be like raw faced yeah. and just like super skinny. Mm-hmm. But, um, and I remember it was this second agency I was at no it was the first one it was the first one my agent at the time because I told you I came out right away yeah and so I got signed and I was on the boys board for I think nine months and mm-hmm. then but I was like the androgynous one yeah. I wasn't booking suits like yeah. it was like the artsy mm-hmm. like Alexander David Wang Bowie vibes. yeah like David yeah. Bowie looking makeup they always gave me like a faux hawk with all my hair mm-hmm. and like lipstick that was glitter and I was like okay cool Editorial. Rockabilly-ish. Yeah. yeah, it was cool. But uh, super editorial. Mm-hmm. But I'm um, never commercial. No, it was always yeah, editorial. No. Yeah. But um, after I came out to them, I was like, hey, so I'm trans and I'm mm-hmm. going to transition. I don't know if this affects my status at the agency. And they were like, oh, just don't get your boobs too big. My agent Barbara at the time, she said, just don't get your tits too big. Mm-hmm. They got to fit the clothes. You need to be a two. You need to be a zero or a two. You but pick. they were okay with you moving to the women's Yeah, board. they didn't even bat an eyelash. They literally, you could see them throw away my old cards and they put up the new one. I was like, I love all right, here we go. Yeah. And then they were just like, all right, so just try not to give yourself away on set. But I didn't have like a gag with them. Mm-hmm. I had a gag at the next one where they're like, do not tell anyone you're trans but I did book more when I didn't tell people I was trans that's and so that sucked because then yeah because then, then you're like I can't fully be myself no I was silent night at these uh, sets everyone thought I was so shy and like the whole industry because I'd get to fashion week because we do Miami fashion week and it's the same girls at every other show yeah. and especially over the years it's always the same girls and mm-hmm. they're just like oh, hey Aries and I'm like I'm like she's shy and I'm like I'm not shy. I'm not I'm shy. Not, I just I'm actually, can't speak right now. I'm not now. supposed to talk. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's, did that do anything to you, though? Like, uh, It just made me really into music because I would just always have my headphones in because it's an excuse not to talk to people. Yeah, and but I so, mean, like, internally. Like, did that make you feel any type of way? Or you were just like, this is what's going I didn't on right feel, now? And it's what I have to do. It's, it's, uh, it's 
a weird double-edged sword because it sucks for me, but also I'm the first of my kind to be in this position that I know of because mm -hmm. it was not advertised that trans models were ever a thing. And did you even have anyone growing up to look up to that no. was like you? Yeah, no, uh, we had uh, we had RuPaul and that's not a trans woman. And so yeah. like that's the only thing they used to show us though. So then mm -hmm. growing, uh, learning more, like I had like my queer friend family there mm -hmm. who taught me about people like L April Ashley, mm -hmm. Lauren Foster, trans models of the past, Roberta Close, who walked from Mugler every year oh, yeah. uh, since the 80s. Mm -hmm. And she's gorgeous. She's a trans Brazilian woman and sh she's still alive and yeah. no one talks about them. Mm -hmm. Oh, Connie Fleming, same thing, Mugler every year. And so no one talks about them because they didn't want you to know about them. They didn't want you to know there were trans models before you or that it was okay or acceptable. Yeah. And it was such a disservice to the rest of us because we don't really know where this is going to go. Yeah, and now and I'm like, I know. you need visibility and you mm -hmm. need to feel included. And, yeah. and it, like my biggest thing growing up as well, like I didn't feel like I saw myself on TV, you know, whenever they were showing a woman that was into women, it was like a very mask, you know, almost Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I don't look anything like this. So what's yeah. going on? With, what's wrong with me? Yeah. So I feel like when you don't see yourself, it just, it does something to you for sure. Yeah. So I think once again, even being on the show that we were on together, even though it didn't do the best, but just yeah. for someone, you know, to see you and, and feel like they're seeing themselves on the screen. Like you were, I, that was show, I've done seven shows and I've, you, you have been the only trans woman that I've ever done a show with. Isn't that sad? It's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. <laughs> freaking <laughs> sad and it needs to change and I'm used to it I'm always the only one yeah. I'm always the only one and they're like oh we have diversity and I'm like I'm alone here <laughs> does everyone know I'm alone here because yeah. I feel like I'm and that tokenized must be so hard because yeah. even being bisexual and going on these shows I'm like oh Mike's calling me <laughs> oh he's probably outside here. hello Oops. are you here okay can you give me five five minutes five minutes and I'll come out <laughs> okay thank you all right bye I just want to finish my thought don't cut that <laughs> <laughs> but no like for me even it's been hard going on shows as a bisexual women and mm -hmm. most of them are dating shows so I'm going on and I can still date men even though I mm -hmm. know I'm dating they more want women. you too yeah, and they and they want me to but it's still easy and okay because I also present I can look straight and I yeah. can still be having these men attracted to me in this way like going on a show as a trans woman yeah. Even X on the Beach, were you like, who? It was, it's funny because going into it, I told Mike because he's like, oh, he's like, uh, you're with John, mm -hmm. uh, who's my husband. No, but. Um... Should I let him in really quickly so he's not. Yeah, let him, in, let, okay. him in, let him in. And then we'll continue. Yeah, no. So going on as trans for this show, did you feel like. So who are there going to be other trans women? You know, are... so it's funny. Me and Mike had that conversation. He's like, oh, he's like, what if someone's into you on the show? I said, I am such a particular cell. It's impossible. And I'm already into someone else. Yeah. Like, it's not happening. Yeah. And has your fiance, like, has he dated trans women? Like, what's his? Yes, he has. Yeah. Okay, I'm so... his first. Yeah. Because yeah, I... I have a thing. I don't date freshmen. Mm. Because, like, if I'm your first experience with the trans community, like, I'm not a gender studies major, I'm not a teacher. It takes a lot of patience for dealing with someone for their first time because they're dealing with a lot of internal stuff. Yeah. They're dealing with shame. They're dealing with shame from the outside world, maybe their mm -hmm. family, their friends, coworkers. And um, I think that's, it's fine. Deal with that. Deal with that on your own time. Yeah. But like, I'm not dealing with that with you mm -hmm. because I am seasoned and mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. that's to each their own. You Again. actually taught me that because I definitely learned that lesson in my last relationship. Yes. I'm like, okay, I got to make mm -hmm. sure I've been the first for so many women mm -hmm. and I just, I can't can't do it anymore. It's, isn't so it a like, lot? It's a, it's lot, a big and responsibility. It's, it's dangerous to do because you never know if they are capable of what you need from them mm -hmm. or it is a lot of teaching and not knowing yeah, or I how, guess if how they're capable of Yeah, it. or how emotionally available they're going to be to you. Mm -hmm. Because they, if you feel like, I know this as a trans woman that dated before, you feel like they're always holding out for something better, which mm -hmm. is the thing they really wanted, mm -hmm. which is a cisgender girl. Mm -hmm. That They're waiting for the real thing. And yeah, it's have like, you had like, men who say they're straight and everything be like, well... I'm going to try it and that kind of thing. Or you're just they don't tell you they're going to try it. Yeah. They're just trying it mm -hmm. and they're letting, they're like, they're love bombing you and yeah. they let you think that like, you know, this is it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm really into you. And then you're just like, and I learned early uh, not to take that seriously. So I, so I wouldn't be a victim. I, I learned, which sucks from, uh, my future relationships mm -hmm. to really make myself closed off and cold as soon as I saw signs of mm, I think those red flags yeah those are the red flags but red yes flags I, I get about. I get mm -hmm. icy yeah. Yeah. yeah well yeah. thankfully you don't have to be icy anymore I don't I don't you are in love I am. I love him so you much. You're engaged. Yeah. She, yes. You're I happy. Am. And they yes. are the cutest couple ever. I When you made that post, I literally bawled my eyes out. Because ah, I just, told me. Yeah, but it was just to like see your friends be happy and to find love. And you know that they're such good people. Like I haven't met him yet, oh. but I'm sure 
because you're also you're a tough cookie i don't think that you would let anyone <laughs> fuck with you as well yeah but i'm sure like he's amazing and i want to meet him he's amazing of, you're gonna meet him you're okay. my little sister I i'm know. like can he's you have a wedding <laughs> we'll work on that <laughs> Oh, what other shows did you okay, do? Okay, so the second show I did was Dr. Nano 210, where I got my nose done on TV. Dr. Yeah, that's right. It was so like, you that's got in your nose, and now you have new boobies. I do have new boobies. Yes, Dr. Michelle that. Lee, Perk Plastic Surgery in Beverly Hills. That's my bitch. I love her. <laughs> she also did my nose. Oh, there you go. That's on right. TV? Or yeah, she... that's the one he did okay, on TV. Okay. Yeah, she rocks. She rocks. I love her. Yeah. Nice. She taught me that beauty is in millimeters. So, <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, don't do overdo know. it. Uh, don't no. Don't overdo it. Do subtle tweaks. You will look a lot better. Do whatever makes you happy, <laughs> a Reese. No, don't do overhauls. You will look crazy. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Some people want to look crazy. Some That's what do. I mean. Do whatever makes do you happy. Do what makes you happy. Yeah. Do what makes you happy. But if you like beauty in, in millimeters, go to Dr. Michelle Lee at Perk Plastic Surgery in Beverly Hills. There she goes. Plugging her surgeon in. Absolutely. Reese. I'm going to just go. <laughs> We've been so deep now, we're just going off topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, and then my third show I did um, with the late, great Leslie Jordan. I was on a, it was a competition show, mm -hmm. and it was called Squeaky Clean. It's on, it was on, what is that thing called? It's on Roku now. Oh. That's who bought it, because it was on Quibi. I don't even know what Quibi is. Remember, it was for like five minutes. It was supposed to blow up during the pandemic, and it actually died because of the pandemic, because oh, you're supposed to use it as like quick show bites. But I, I won the show, mm. so I won like five grand, which is no money. But um, and sorry, money. in this economy, in this economy, it's just my rent for two months. Anyway, <laughs> five grand, bitch please. That's like a nice wig. Anyway, I'm <laughs> like, mm. anyway. I'll take it. Mm -hmm, I'll take it. No, I'll, I'll still take it. I did. But um, so I won that, mm -hmm. and he was so nice, so lovely to work with mm -hmm. uh that was a two-day shoot because we did do a lot of reshoot stuff mm -hmm. but uh, that was fun and then my fourth show was x on the beach we love it yeah so you've done a couple shows you yeah those are my unscripted my scripted shows i don't know how many of those i've done but you're in the industry and you're killing it yeah. and you have such a presence and like i said that whole visibility thing of people like us not mm -hmm. being able to see ourselves growing up on our yeah. television screens in the magazines and stuff like that like i think it's so beautiful and important and like you're going through it so confident it sounds like every step of the way i'm sure you've just been like well, at first, in the beginning yeah. with the model, you're like, I'm going to make this bag and not say anything. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you fully come in, into who you are and you present who you are fully now. And yeah. I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I'm having a great time. It's great. And you're still tokenized. They still, like, people love to use you during pride campaigns and then mm -hmm. they don't call you. Like, I was trans in November, bitch. I was like, I could have been in your campaign then. And then you could have re-ran it during yeah. the pride campaign. Oh, that's like, just, a whole nother thing yes. that we can talk about. Yes, the but, tokenism. Um, yeah. no, but I, I'm sure you get the same things. But I get so many DMs anytime mm -hmm. where it's just like oh my god I've been watching your journey I've been watching you for since I was a kid I've been yeah. and it's like I'm so glad I see someone like you and I'm like I have one that I haven't answered right now because I try to answer all of them yeah, same. but I have one I haven't answered that just got to me yesterday the day before mm -hmm. and they're like I've been watching you since strut and I just wanted you to know your modeling career really helped me really get through my transition and I was like because so, it, it makes a huge difference because yeah. I didn't have anyone to look at yeah so what do you say back to those people and what would you say to everyone watching right now just like advice on on if you're in the community, if you're trans, if you're a black woman, how how did you find that confidence and how do you every day like go through this industry being yourself? Like what do you tell yourself? What can they tell themselves to like give themselves that confidence? Well, first I wanna say thank you. Thank you for buying merch right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Say it again, <laughs> plug it again. Dragqueenmerch.com. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but no, but firstly, first I wanna say thank you because I think gratitude is so important and I'm so grateful for everybody that tunes in, watches me, mm -hmm. uh, likes my story, likes who I am as a person, hates who I am as a person but likes to watch it that's fun mm -hmm. i think it's fun it's all tv yeah. it's fine it's entertainment have a good time mm -hmm. But I said, thank you for watching and caring and giving a shit and seeing yourself in me. It's great. Um, and then secondly, to everyone queer that, you know, sees them uh, themselves in me, um, we don't have a choice. Like, do you want to be miserable for everyone else or do you want to be happy with yourself? It's time to be selfish, honey, because you, this isn't a dress rehearsal. You get through this life one time as far as we know. Don't fuck it up. Like, do not fuck it up for yourself. Trying to make your parents happy, trying to make your coworkers happy, trying to make your peers happy. Those people do not pay your bills nine times out of 10. Uh, and they don't have to walk with you through this life. We should all be trying to walk each other home safely. Mm -hmm. And if people aren't doing that and make you feel unsafe or like you can't tell them things or you can't be yourself, you got to cut those people out. And sometimes they'll be back to apologize and realize the error of their ways. Sorry, I should have been supportive or sorry, I wasn't great with you. Sometimes they won't be back, but you'll have yourself. And that is the best company when you're alone 
because you're always going to be alone at some point. And so it's good to really love and know yourself when you're by yourself. And once you're yourself, you do find those people later on that yes. accept you for you. And you build this whole new chosen family, I say sometimes, mm-hmm. when you really don't have people in your life that support you. You will find those people, whether it's in person or on social media or on platforms like this where we can all communicate. Mm-hmm. So once again, guys, I want to say thank you so, so, so much for tuning in. Put no. any comments that you may have. We may have a Reese back because I think that you just have oh, so back. much <laughs> to share. And I love hanging out with you in general. Oh, but no. if you have any more questions for Reese or any more questions in general or what you guys want to hear about on this well, pod. We're going to have Mike on, too. <laughs> He's right He's there. He's over here watching us. He's right there. Mike will be on soon. He was on the show X on the Beach with us. <sighs> He's such an attention whore. Um, he couldn't help it. Couldn't help himself. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you, Arise, for coming thank and being you. on the podcast and being so open. And how do we end this amazing podcast? Thank you for having coffee with Kira. I love you, John. Oh, yeah. we love you, John. I'll meet you soon. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.